so hi everyone uh, i hope you have already gone through my previous recording that is uh, interactive alv and now you know that how to create an interactive alv report and how to navigate from one interactive uh, sorry one alv list to the next alv list maybe a primary to secondary or header to line item whatever way we can call it so today we are going to work on the pf status and update table after that uh, in the interactive alv we have few more things like navigating to a transaction we would also be talking about sap memory about memory shared process so we will also be talking about these concepts so today we will try to finish these two things and then tomorrow these three things can be finished so so we'll talk about pf status today and then we will try to update the table from here we report output itself so updating table is long pending so we will finish it today itself so that you know how to do the operations on a table uh, it could be a standard table it could be a z table uh, the concept remains same but then we don't try to do we don't try to apply these logics on uh, standard tables because the data in standard table will be updated through a transaction for example this table which is in front of you that is vbap or the header table that is vbak these tables would be updated by the transaction va01 or va02 i have explained it long back so va01 is basically for creation of a sales order va02 is basically for the creation of sorry for the change of sales order you also must be aware by now that whenever there is a transaction which contains one which means that means it's related to creation if it contains two it's related to change if it contains three it's for display so va01 sales order creation va02 sales order change va03 sales order display so that is the concept the other thing so before we move into it when we go into the details i would also like to give you a small tip like i try to do it in every session for 2 3 minutes so i'm opening a new session i'm not sure if uh, i have explained it to you earlier so there is a transaction called s now i guess i have explained it long back but still let's repeat the concept so s note is the transaction to download a particular sap note now what is an sap note for example there is some bug in the standard product itself there could be a transaction not working fine or the particular feature of the transaction is not working in a particular scenario so in the back end there might be a bug in the standard code since the standard code is delivered by sap and it, and it's a part of our product so we can any time go back to them raising our concern and then there are two scenarios either they will provide a solution Uh, by looking into the problem and or they will uh, ask us to refer to an existing solution already provided for that particular problem now in both the cases we have to download a note from sap marketplace and then we have to apply that note in our system so this is the transaction for note s note is the transaction now before we actually download the transaction the process is we go to sap marketplace site and then we download the sap note from there so this is the kind of sap note you will get from there it's, this note is in the pdf format you can see this is related to the printer and output management they have already given some details so you come you download the note and you see that for not all versions this note is available uh, applicable you can see these are the software components 647 so what you need to do you need to go into your system go to system go to status normally this this will be done by basis guides in terms of checking whether the nodes is really applicable to our system or not but then a functional or a technical consultant is supposed to find out the node so if we talk about sap abad so it's will it's 700 this note is for sap basis 64700710 so 700 so you can see that this note is applicable to 700 so this note can be downloaded so 
I know that now I know that 685571 is relevant to my system. Now I need to go through all the details of this solution and then I need to decide whether this note is really applicable. If yes, then we will ask the business guys to go to S note and then download it from the marketplace. So this is uh, by default connected to the SAP marketplace side this system via solution manager. So Solution Manager is another system provided by SAP and from ECC component onwards it's mandatory to use Solution Manager for any kind of implementation project because every system will be connected to SolMan or Solution Manager via RFC connections and Solution Manager will take care of all the monitorings and any kind of bugs or communication with SAP everything. So that's why SolMan comes for free, you just need to install in your environment. So I went to SNOW and then you can see the display of inconsistent nodes, new nodes. So new node means when I go here and then download SAP node. So I can give the node number here. Now we obviously it's not going to be downloaded here because uh, this is not connected to Solomon but then let's 685571. So you come here 685571. There are a hell lot of nodes provided by SAP. So basis guys will provide the details here. Now since there is no RFC connection between SAP OSS that is online support service. So it's not going to download it but then that is the process and once it's downloaded it will come here as a part of new nodes. Now you can select it and then you can implement it. So obviously we are not going to take any risk because if the system is corrupted for the session should be stopped. But then that is the process and you have to be aware of it how to download SAP note, how to go through SAP note for. So you can go to SAP marketplace site, SAP uh, service.sap.com. So there is site. Service.sap.com. So to log into this site, you need to have a SAP marketplace ID and password that will be provided to you or your organization by SAP based on your agreements and then based on the product you have chosen. So this is the link. You need to go here. So I don't have a login ID and password or even if I have it, I cannot show it here because it's my, it's related to my client. So I cannot show it here. But then once you log in, you go inside. So this kind of thing, it's coming directly from SAP in the backend SAP. So you go there, you go to so you have to navigate from soft uh, keys and help something like that. Once you go there, you provide the note number. It will display the note there. You can see what kind of code change it's proposing. And then you can download it in PDF. You can send it to your functional guy or a basis guy. Or maybe other stakeholders, they can review the note and then they can come back with a decision whether to apply the note or not. If yes, then go to basis will go to S note, download it and then implement it. Once implemented, it will create a transport request and it will be moved to further uh, upstream systems. So that is the process. And then this knowledge will really help you in real time environment. So as I was telling you that this transaction, when we create a sales order or when we change a sales order, data will be stored in the tables called VBAK and VBAP. So VBAK is for all the header data, VBAP is for all the line item data. So SAP never expects you to go and directly do a database operation on the standard tables. For G tables there is no restriction but for standard table it's not expected. But yes, at the same time it's not prohibited also. I mean you can go ahead and you can do an update, insert, modify, anything you want to do. You can do it but then it's not recommended because when the data is stored to standard tables via transaction code, it does a lot of validation at transaction code level. So due to which incorrect data is not allowed to be updated in the database. But if I directly do an operation on, on the standard database, then it, it's not advisable because it will, it might insert the junk data and that in production it's not at all advisable. So data is everything for which we are not implementing an ARP and then we are doing a lot of things, we are uh, paying a lot of money against it and also so everything is basically related to data and then data is the uh, I would say the, uh, the property of that company. It will be useful in many ways 
uh, based on the last 10 years data company could analyze some trend they can forecast a lot of things can be done so data is basically the power information is the power and then to protect the information we have a lot of rules and regulation which we should follow so never ever try to update a transparent table until and unless all the stakeholders are agreed so that's that's something about database table so today we are going to do an update uh, we are going to do uh, the database operations for example this is the vpn Sales order by now you must be knowing that what is the sales order. So if not, you can just Google it out and get some details on it. Or maybe you can go through my earlier videos. I go to SP38. I go to my program, e-test program here. <coughs> I execute it directly. So I get this sales order. Now if you see here. This button is enabled. This is enabled. This is enabled. But then this is not enabled. This particular button, save button, or maybe I want to add a button here. This kind of requirements also you see in real time. So what we need to do, we need to add GUI status or a GUI status in our program. So in SAP we call it GUI status or GUI status, whatever way you want to call it. So if you come to the program now, so as of now we have include fields, transaction types, events, or those things, which is okay. Now, okay. Before that, let's let's talk about one more concept here. So if uh, if you if you remember, I have made a I save here. It's not enabled. In grid display on the second screen, but then it's enabled on the first screen. So let's see the difference first. What is the difference? If I execute this, and then if I select this, if I move it here. So I get an option of saving this layout. I showed you yesterday, but if I go to my next layer, then I don't get that option because that I underscore save equal to A is not enabled in the code. So that is the difference. You you should be knowing that also. This is available in the first report, first page, but not available in the second page. So that is the huge of it. So I hope that is clear now. Just see the process carefully, and then it's very very easy. We'll go to SEAP. SEAP is like our business audit repository, uh, audit navigator. So you see everything. It's kind of repository. Lot of things will be here. So I'm going to function group, standard function group. Function group and all we will discuss, so don't worry. For now, just uh, look at it carefully. I think that it's still in uh, this one. It's still pending, so don't worry. It takes care of it. For now, I'm just going to function group standard function group S A L T. Come here in the standard function group, and if I check the function modules, you can see I get all my standard function modules which I am using, and 
can see that they have English display here. This was called in the program. So this function group contains few other things as well. GUI status or a GUI status. If I double click on the standard, just see it carefully, it's very easy concept. There is nothing special that I mean as I said earlier, a web is the easiest possible programming language. Most of the things are already provided by SAP. We just need to know how to navigate around it and then almost everything is available over Google. So I think I would say seventy percent of the programmers survive because of Google and HTML and other sites. So because nobody really cares and nobody really remembers everything. So whenever you have a problem, just go and Google it out. You will definitely get something related to it, which will give you a kind of hint. So if you come here, you will see a menu bar, an application toolbar. You can see all the buttons here, which were shown there, which were shown. see that nothing is mentioned here. I mean, obviously it's not mentioned because it's a part of function group. So I do a right click here. Copy. So SAP is SAP LSALD standard to program this. Let the name remain same standard. Or maybe G standard that would be better. So whatever is available here will be available in our program now. So I come back to my program. I do an activate here. This GUI status is available here now. And the good thing is that we can modify it. If I hit here, I can modify it. So I'll open this. I'll mention SAD. Mentioning SAVP, so this button will be enabled. Now I go to application toolbar and then what I do basically Because I entered save by default, it's getting the standard button. If I hit add, if I hit enter, so you can see that system does not recognize that. So it says static text, yes, it's static. Function for function text will be save icon name. So, what kind of icon you want to give? So, I want to give it a kind of button. These are the icons provided by SAP. You can choose any of these icons. Sorry. 
So I have added a button called add. So the function uh, code for that is add. So it is done here. Save is done here. I'm just saving it. Now it's basically kind of inserted in my program. I'm going to activate this. There is nothing special, nothing official, I did nothing in fact. Just I inherited the properties of a standard program. So this one. Just hold on, I take this call and then send the recording. <coughs> Sorry, I'm back now. So now this uh, GUI status is available in my program and I'm going to activate this. Program is active now. Let's maximize it. So it's active now. I execute it. So this one is still not enabled. Good status. So why it's not enabled? Because again it depends on my function model. So you use a display display. You can see that I need to set a PF status. So the PF status would be G standard. No. So the PF status would not be G standard. What I need to give here, I need to give a uh, subroutine name kind of thing. For example, if you try, as I told you earlier, As I told you earlier that the moment we add display items here, it creates a perform by default. Similarly, if I do a PF status set here, it will create a perform automatically and we need to write a form for it. So I keep the name as PV standard. Not G standard, again my mistake. It should be something like set underscore PF status. So that perform would be like perform set PF status. Now, this whole thing I can cut from here. It's not the right place. should go in the F01 input. So somewhere in the F01 at the end you should be able to just paste it. So that it lies at the right place. So I'm writing one more form form set underscore status. Okay, but because I forgot the syntax, I need to go back to the desktop. Using RTXTab, type SLISTXTab. So, XTab is basically the external table from which it will go and fetch the details. It's the standard syntax, we don't need to do anything. The XTAP type SLIST XTAP. That's it. So automatically it got converted.
Let's execute this report once again. Let's see what happens now. So I can see my save button here. My LB report remains same. There is no impact on that. But my save button is here now. My other save button is here now. So you will get these kind of requirements in your project that just add the new button on the GUI status or the PF status which will do something. It could be saving, it could be deleting, it could be anything XYZ. Similarly here. <coughs> now, I need to push this data in, in, an, um, in, in a G table or a custom, custom database table. So what we will do, we will create a table very similar to the EVA which will have from VB here until AVGRU. So go to SVG Raven. Display. Then go to SC11 again. For SVG Raven, okay. VABGD test. Let's make it easy. Let's create a new table. Oh my god. It already exists. Table. It will store mass and transactional data. Display maintenance allowed with restriction is fine. Let's go to the fields. Copy a preprint from here to here. Sorry, not like this. From here, do a control Y. Drag and drop till here. Hit enter. Everything will come automatically. Go to the technical settings. Save it. Put it in the same package. In real time package and transport request would vary, but here it doesn't matter we are putting it. In real time we have to take care of it. <coughs> Data class is let's say the PL one type category. Don't bother about warnings. We don't need this right now. It will come out of this session. So if I go and try to see the data, so of course it doesn't have anything. Now, one important thing which I would like to tell you here is that whatever operation we are going to do on this trans I mean, transparent table, it should be based on an internal table, on an internal table or a work area. When I am saying internal table, this means it will, it will do, do an operation for multiple records. When I am saying work area, then it will do it for single record. So, Do a very simple thing here now. Let's go to the subroutine where we are handling the user command. Okay, we call same case now. Then let's see if this gets triggered or not.
are running my report, executing this. See, so it triggers very well. Now I am sure that whatever I will write for this button, save button, it's going to work fine. Similarly, if I execute it again, and then if I hit on this button, this does not work because this one is add. The code for this is add. And save. So this also triggers very well. So till now everything is fine. I can do an operation on my database successfully. So here we will also use the concept of LUW that is logical unit of work. I have explained it earlier in I think one of the initial videos that logical unit of work is related to uh, the standard database operations, which means if the database operation was successful, it could be insert, append, delete, update then commit work will trigger and it will make it final. But if the operation was not successful, it will trigger a rollback and the database will be stored as it is in the previous stage. So get point, it's not required anymore. So what I'm doing here is when save or add, so I have everything in, I know that I have everything in IT underscore DB here. I want to insert IT underscore VBAK record in C table. So I, what I am doing here is insert C VBAK one from IT underscore. So what I am telling the system that you insert everything to this, this database. Table. Now if sorry, commit work fails roll back work. here I will keep a method also message I So because it's it's an internal table, so we make it internal table. So basically the structure of uh, structure of both the tables are not matching here because we have we don't have MA and DT here. So what we need to do we need to add MA and DT uh, in this See that there is no syntax error. Commit 
executing this and if I hit on this button or this button it should insert the data in the retrieval. If I hit this you can see the database records updated successfully. If I go here I go here I go here I can see that 200 records were inserted successfully. So now I also wanted to explain a concept here. you know that we can do an operation like this. So I have used insert statement and this these record, records are already inserted in the database table. Now if I try to do the same thing again so system will not be able to do it because insert works only for unique records. It does not work for non-unique records. Now since all the records are already available, so none of them are unique, which means database is getting a duplicate record there. So it cannot insert it. It cannot insert a duplicate record there. So we go back. So what we can do, so we have the other option. We want to program it in such a way that if there is a record already exists, then we just modify it. If there is the record does not exist, then you insert it. So for that, we can use a modify statement. So modify is this table from this internal table. So now if I run this, and if I save this, there is no dump expected. So everything is fine. We have 200 records that we chose. So you are seeing that that is the difference between insert and modify. Now, for a moment, what I can do, I can come in this and I can do the same operation by doing like this. Loop at IP underscore I can do the same thing like what we are insert z d d d k one from which means it will put a loop it will do it one by one which is not a good practice because I want to insert all the records in one go but then you can do like this insert modify delete everything like this so I'm commenting this you just know the concept I will go ahead with this one for now because it's just a demo so modify is okay. Now, now don't go with uh, these wordings. What I'm doing, I'm doing a delete here. So delete this table from this internal table, which means all the records in this internal table, if they are available in this key table, just delete. It should be deleted. So the expected result is that it should make my table empty again. So if I'm saving it again, Technically, it should delete all the records. Let's see. You can see that everything is working fine. So this is how we, we do a, uh, a database operation in SAP. We can insert, update, delete. Uh, okay, we'll go with the update also. So for update, what happens? Okay, for update, I need to create a scenario. So I'll put update.
due to time constraints. So I think we are good for today. You know that uh, I mean you should be confident enough uh, uh, by I mean in terms of writing a button in the GUI spaces in the PS spaces. You can do a database operation. You can create an interactive ARB. So I also wanted okay few more things we should know here is. things also we will do. We have so many points here. But we try to cover as much as possible. So I think we are good for today. We have tried out its very simple concept. I didn't do anything special today. And then I will uh, catch you again tomorrow. Thanks for your time.